Hello, how are you doing? So I thought I would revisit an old video that I did. It was a video with Emma's rectangles, beautiful little face. I will leave it up here so you can see what I'm talking about. And that video actually got a lot of views, more than I expected. And turns out you guys really wanted to know how I did the highlights and shadows on that video. So this video is just gonna focus on the highlights and shadows. So if you are coming to this video because you don't know how to draw vector portraits at all, you want a little bit of a guidance, I guess, head over to the previous video with Emma and then you can watch that. And then when you get to the highlights bit, which I skimmed over, you can watch this one. So without further ado, let's get into the video. I have a photo of Sophie Clough, she's beautiful, she has a YouTube channel, Instagram, all that jazz, I will leave her links in the description and she's very kindly let me borrow her face for the purpose of this video. So what I have done is created a very flat and basic version of Sophie using vectors and the pen tool. So uh, I'm going to show you basically how to bring it to life a little bit more. Um, with some various tools. So what we're gonna do is zoom in and the first thing I like to do is the eyes. I feel like the eyes is the part of the face that obviously you look at first, it draws attention and that is what I wanna focus on. So what I'm gonna do first of all is do the little reflection in her eyes. So in order to do that, I'm just gonna use the blob brush tool and to do that I'm clicking and hold this and it's down here or you can click shift B. I'm going to put it onto white, just pure white and then I'm going to just draw a random little shape. I could be super precise about this, sometimes you can see like reflections of ring lights in people's eyes, sometimes it's just a blob but there's always, well there's generally always a reflection in people's eyes, otherwise they look a bit dead on the inside and we don't want to do that, do we? So yeah, let's add these. I'm going to do one larger, one smaller, same on this eye. So sort of in the same place, like in a similar place, because that's obviously where the light has hit. So it's going to be similar, but not completely identical in each eye. And then what I'm also going to do in the eyes is she has a bit of a shadow like over here and obviously the inner part of her eye is different colours. I'm going to add a little bit of brown I think into this. So I'm going to go to the blob brush again and I'm going to put it in like a, I guess like a hazily brown sort of colour, maybe like that. And all I'm going to do is put a big old blob of that sort of around the black part of her eye. I always forget what that's called. Is that the iris? I'm not sure. <laughs> um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go click that and then we're going to go on to effect and we're going to go on to, when I can find it, Gaussian blur. So this tool will blur out what I have drawn. Um, make sure the preview is ticked and drag the slider until you can see things happening basically. So if it's on zero it's got pretty solid lines and if it's dragged further out the more I drag it the blurrier it gets basically. So I'm going to leave it at that and then I'm going to put that behind, I think it's the pupil isn't it the black bit? The pupil? Wow I love, I actually passed science believe it or not but clearly wouldn't know. I've done that and it actually looking back the hazel part is only at the top so I'm gonna just lower the opacity a bit I'm gonna whoop, not touch that I'm gonna drag it up here a tad and then I'm just gonna duplicate it for the other side so I'm just gonna click whilst I'm holding option and drag that over like so and then it is a lot lighter so again I'm gonna go for blob brush I'm gonna put it on an off white then using the blob brush I'm just gonna draw a little circle. I could do this with like an actual um, shape but I'm lazy <laughs> basically. And then we're gonna go artistic blur, Gaussian blur and we're gonna blur it. And obviously the more you drag the more blurry it gets. Press OK. I'm gonna send that 
behind so it's on the right area of her eye and you can see there's just more dimension to it i can spend ages fiddling with this and doing many different versions of it but just do it to whatever you want see how it fits with the photo that you're using and go from there it's all sort of experimentation so yeah if you are enjoying this video don't forget to click the subscribe button and join my little creative family i have now added some highlights to her eyes again i could go in even further i could add a little bit of shadow to the white of her eyes here but we're not going to bother because I don't want this video to be two hours long. Right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to blur these parts here, which I added earlier. So these are the pink bits of eyeshadow that she's put in the corner of her eyes. So again, literally simple as effect, blur, Gaussian blur, and then move the slider however you want. I think I'm going to blur it quite a lot. Um, and then of course I've got the option of changing the opacity if I want it to be a little bit softer to show some more skin tone through it. But you can see the difference from me just quickly doing that. And then again, the same with the eyeshadow. So effect, blur, Gaussian blur, and we're gonna blur it so far maybe not too much on this one i actually did change the opacity on this so we can darken that up a little bit and you can see that it has softened the edges and then finally this little color here so you can kind of see that i do it in stages i'll do the darkest part of it the medium shade part of it and the lightest part of it that's just how i have always done it there might be other more professional ways of doing it but you know this one works so yeah i've never claimed to be a professional <laughs> just winging it okay do that so now we've blurred out all the eyeshadow portions i'm sure some makeup artists out there feel like that's probably not a great job at doing the eyeshadow but we're just going to roll with it when i've done that i've realized now that this part that i drew is a little bit too light so i'm just going to go in here and just darken it up so it blends in a little bit better with everything else so it's sort of all all together i'm just going to zoom out and you can see already that the eyes really have come to life. Like I said, if I spend more time on it, I would put some shadow on the actual white part of her eye. But we ain't got the time for that today. And I ain't got the patience, basically. So what we're going to do now is make her actual face look a little bit more face-like. <laughs> so to do this, again, we're going to take the blob brush tool. But we're actually going to do it in a clipping mask. Um, so I'll show you how I'm going to do that. So I want to draw the contour, the highlight and the blush on Sophie's face so we can make it look good. So this is the layer that I have that is the face. I am going to copy that, Command C. I am going to paste that in front. So edit, paste in front or Command F if you're on Mac. So now I have two versions of Sophie's face and they're both exactly on top of each other. And what I'm going to do is paint some shadows, highlights and blusher and then mid-tones into this layer and then we'll move forward. So firstly for shadows I want to pick a colour that is darker than her skin tone. Um, we can change the colour of this later on but we'll just go with sort of um, that kind of shade for now obviously we can change it and what i'm going to do is blob brush it again there's different ways you could do this you could use the pen tool you could use the pencil tool you could use whatever tool you feel like there's no set rules with art and graphic design you can just wing it and see what happens is my motto so firstly i'm going to draw the contours of her nose so i'm going to go down here like that See how that feels when I blur it out and we're going to go down here like that. Then there is shadow sort of up here. So we're going to go up here like this. And then same on this side but in a little bit of a lower place. And there's obviously shadow round where her hair has sort of skimmed her face a little bit. So we're just going to do that. Then there's some under her lips, so I'm just going to do it around the lips too. And then also she's got a little bit of shadow on her jaw, like this. 
maybe going up slightly here so it sort of shapes around her chin and then obviously the contour that she has under her cheekbone which we're going to draw like that then finally i'm going to do a little line around her hairline this looks crazy so i've done all the um shadow looks a bit crazy i'm going to click on them all and just quickly group them together just to make things a little bit easier down the line we're probably going to add some more shadow as well but this is just to begin with and what i'm going to do is group so command g for mac users and then remember that face layer that we copied i'm going to click on that bring it to the front so you can do that with right click arrange bring to front or you can do it with the keyboard shortcuts and i am going to click that group we've just created and create a clipping mask. I'm not gonna go into clipping masks because they confuse me still. Basically, think of it like a giant cookie cutter. So obviously these bits are all kind of sticking outside the lines. We don't want that to happen. So if I create a clipping mask, it's gonna chop it out like a giant cookie cutter. So if I click make, you can see if I click off that it has cut everything out, but it's still kept all those shapes in full working order so if i double clicked now you can see that i can edit just those shapes and they're all still there they're just sort of hiding behind the cookie cutter <laughs> what a great description so what i'm going to do now is go in here and i feel like i could probably blur all these together but it might not look right so we're not going to do that we're going to do it like one at a time or like two at a time so i'm actually going to ungroup it so I can click on them all separately. We're gonna go for the nose to begin with, and then we're gonna effect blur, Gaussian blur, and we're just gonna pump it up pretty far and just see what the outcome is. I'm not quite sure how this is gonna work. It's all experimentation. It depends on how big the file is. It depends on how much shadow there is, you know. So we'll leave it at that, press okay. And then if I go back, to the original layer. You can see that there's some sort of shadow happening there, but it has sort of lost its shape. It's sort of lost the really solid definition. So I'm gonna go back into the layer and just adjust that. So because I have applied the Gaussian blur, I can go in and re-edit that. So what I've done is I've opened properties. If you can't find that, it is in window properties and it'll pop up. And then in here, I can click the Gaussian blur that I applied and I can adjust it. So I'm gonna just drag it down a little bit, go back and see what that looks like. I feel like that's okay, we can add to it. So then we are going to do the same for under her, under her lip. So I'm just gonna affect blur, Gaussian blur, and probably leave it at that. And we can obviously, I'm gonna bump it up a little bit and maybe make it a tad smaller because obviously it's sort of spread out all the pixels and I don't want it to be too crazy. So let's just see what that looks like. It's added a nice little bit of blur. Maybe I'll add another layer of shadow on it, but for the purpose of this video, we'll leave it at that for now. Then I want to do the bits around her face. So again, I'm sure you know this by now, effect, blur, Gaussian blur, and we're gonna do the face. So I want this to be quite subtle that one at the bottom looks a bit too harsh for me so i probably will end up changing the opacity of that or moving it around but we've blurred those and as expected this one is a bit too much like it's a bit too high up so i'm just going to go in and because it is in the cookie cutter the magical cookie, cookie cutter that we love i can just move it down click back out of the clipping mask and it's sort of like moved it down like you can still see it's there but it's not all on display last few little bits of the shadow and then we'll get on to some more highlight things so again click that effect blur gaussian blur you can play around the different blurs too um it's all just trial and error like i said and um, you just play around until you find something that you like so that's very very subtle i quite like that i actually think this one here i'm going to change the shape of it because i think that's what's making it look a bit weird so i'm going to just thin out the path that I drew 
and see whether that makes a little bit of a difference. I mean, that's just completely made it disappear. <laughs> Maybe I need to move it actually. Let's just move it up a little bit. See what that looks like. I mean, it's still not perfect, but this stuff takes time. Now the final one for now for the shadow is the jaw bone, the contour, and I'm not gonna blur this one out too much because we all have a little bit of contour. So I want it to be at a good level and then I can also obviously change the opacity of it. So there we go, we've got a bit of contour going on. It's looking a little bit more lifelike. Let me just move this whole layer behind the eyes because currently it is overlapping the eyes. So there we go. It does risk looking a little bit mucky. Let's just move her ear. <laughs> I think this bit is probably a little bit too harsh, so I'm gonna just change the opacity. This bit again, this bit I'm not really happy with, but we'll we'll get onto that. So for the highlights, again, blob brush tool, same sort of principle, but with a lighter color. So I'm gonna just put it on pure white for now, and then obviously we can go back in and change it. That's the beauty of using Illustrator and using vectors. And I'm gonna highlight and paint like the tip of her nose, the cheekbones, her forehead, under her eyebrows, the typical place you would find where the light hits. So we're gonna just draw a big old blob there. We're gonna put one on her nose. We've got a couple of little highlights here, like behind her lips. So we can put it behind the lip layer. And then I'm gonna do some down here and here and then possibly on her chin. And then as always, we can go back in later and fiddle around with it. So I'm gonna do these cheekbone highlights to begin with. Same old principle, effect, blur, Gaussian blur, and you can play around with the slider. So it's gonna be quite harsh because it is in white, but just look on the effect it has on the pixels themselves rather than the color. And then we can tone it down with the opacity so it looks more like skin tone colour. I've just always sort of chose white. I feel like it's just the easiest way without trying to figure out skin tones because I'm not very good at picking the correct skin tone. So yeah, we have maybe done that one a little bit too much. Let's go effect blur, Gaussian blur and don't push it too far because then you can see the bounds of the box maybe like that and then change the opacity, bump that right down, maybe a little bit more. Then we have the chin. So effect blur, Gaussian blur. And again, probably around there actually, leave it at that. I'm gonna change the opacity, lower it down a little bit, perfect. It's very repetitive as you can see and you could do it all in one go. It just depends on what sort of effect you want in. So that's the lips. And then finally we have the nose. So I'm gonna do this one less because the highlight on Sophie's nose is quite prominent. So I'm gonna not blur this one as much. So it still looks pretty solid, but of course change the opacity a little bit. I actually might move that one down a touch. And then obviously all these layers are not in a clipping mask because we didn't do that. So I'm gonna click them all. I'm gonna group them and I'm gonna pick up the face layer again that I used previously, like we did before, copy it. So edit, copy, and then paste in front. I'm gonna bring that right to the front. I'm gonna pick up the highlights and the skin layer that I've just copied. I am gonna create a clipping mask. So the cookie cutter object clipping mask make, and it stopped those from going over the edges too much. This one needs fixing. Oh, the hair is in the wrong order. There we go. So now it doesn't overlap on the hair, but it is overlapping on the lips. So I need to send that layer backwards so it's behind the features of her face. 
So I've done that and you can see now that lip layer is behind her top lip, it's behind the eyes, it's not interacting, interacting, interfering with anything else. So that is the very basics of shadows and highlights. Um, really I've, what I've done actually is mid-tones and highlights. So what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to go in and do the shadows and highlights in the hair and again it's the same principles, it's doing the shadows, the mid-tones and the highlights, it's going through, checking it, blurring them a little bit, um, adding different shapes in and sort of seeing what it's going to look like. It's all trial and error but yeah this is the basics. I'm going to just insert a really long probably time lapse of me completing this drawing but if you do have any questions and if you want me to explain things a little bit further in the comments let me know. I hope you've enjoyed this little video and yeah cue the time lapse and I hope you enjoy the final product. <laughs> <laughs>